imagine equally in London and Brighton and Manchester and in Liverpool and Birmingham, I imagine people would be influenced by Big Star, but for some reason maybe people in Glasgow started to talk about it in interviews and definitely the first time we spoke about it in interviews, uh, the, the journalist didn't, had never heard of Big Star, which was surprising for us. No, I think uh, me and Douglas were listening to Alex Chilton records probably before we really got into Big Star. Well, Norman reckons actually Raymond McGinley was the guy that got hold of the Big Star LPs, got all three of them. And then Douglas and Norman were so tight and sharing music with each other, so Douglas very early on would have been aware. So it was actually Douglas and Norman who played me September Girls and 13 and show me these records. You know, the Big Star records were certainly under the radar, but there's always, obviously always people with key years in Glasgow, so I imagine even probably from the 70s, there was the Stax versions of the Big Star records doing the rounds in Glasgow and probably your more discerning listeners were kind of passing them around, you know. I mean, we all kind of got into Big Star at the same time, you know, the September Girls, and then you hear that and then you're like, well, we need to find out more about that. I think it's purely in the strength of the, the quality of the records. that they, they, In spite of the lack of success, they made their way to Glasgow and they inspired a, a whole raft of people, you know. When we were making the early fan club records, Especially bandwagon esque, we we'd been listening to a lot of the first two Big Star records. But Teenage Fan Club name checked them a lot in interviews. And, and people used that influence almost like a hammer to hit us with, I think, maybe because as if we were, as if we were just completely ripping them off, which I mean, there's certain, I can definitely hear the influences or whatever, but it was definitely not a cynical move on our part, you know. So the album was released, and someone uh, who, who we knew in the US passed a, a copy of the record on to Alex. Uh, and of course we're thinking he, he would say he hated it because Alex could be contrary um, but for some reason he liked it um, and we we were playing in New Orleans and we met him, he came along to the gig and we we hit it off he liked um, he said what, what, what's your sign and I said I'm a Libra and he's like okay and we said well gone okay, what's your birthday and so we, you know he was into astrology you know but obviously those uh, you know astrological descriptions or card descriptions of character there's the good side and there's the bad side and you'd hear him tell some people the kind of complimentary part of it and then maybe some other people that he wanted to put in their place he would tell them the, their bad side or something so i think straight away there was just something that um, he made a connection with people in glasgow i don't know if it was something about a sort of sense of humor and also a musical connection um and uh, particularly uh, Jason McPhail, a friend of ours who um, led a band called V-Twin for a while. I mean, I love Teenage Fan Club, you know? I just loved that band. I still love that band, they're a great band. You know, they, they talk about Big Star, so you, you, you listen to these records and you go, oh, they're really good too. And then suddenly you have the notion of like, I wonder if we got that guy and phoned him up and said, would you come to Glasgow? And we'll get Teenage Fan Club to be your band. So it's just, you're just, a, like, you're just like a wee kid, just wanking off and having fun, right? It's, it's just like, we just, we can do this and it, it might happen and, and you know, you get lucky sometimes and it happens. He came over, he'd met us, he played with us at Jason's club, he'd gotten to know people here, he had friends here, and he felt comfortable here. I mean, Alex was a guy that lived in New Orleans in a smaller US city, Glasgow's a small, so maybe he felt comfortable here, you know? Yeah, he certainly did, I think, you know? I mean, we're all kind of pretty nice guys, you know? So, I mean, because friendship and all oh, that's a real important part of anything I've ever done, you know, so um, he just kind of got on with people, so maybe he just felt welcome. And I mean, I think for him, you know, he's coming here and he's just getting absolutely adored everywhere he goes. It's like, it's Alex Chilton, you know? He had a reputation as being quite a difficult artist or a difficult person, and even in the time we knew him, he's, there were still episodes where people would would recount, you know, Alex was really difficult. And, but as he, whenever he came to Glasgow, he was a sweetheart, you know, and he, he, I think he really responded to people, because people here, they weren't kind of, I think people, I, I don't remember many people up asking about Big Star Records, I think everybody was quite respectful of uh, giving him his space. And I think people were very engaging and friendly without intruding. If he liked you, great. If he didn't, forget about it. And back to Glasgow another three, four, five times. I mean, he, he was a regular, a regular visitor, you know. Every wee while he was over and doing a gig and then there'd be, he'd stay in town for a few nights and there'd be a get together at someone's house and a couple of acoustics and, and sing songs, you know. You know, he was a real fan of music and he would he turned us on to lots of good music and I think we, we let him hear some things that he really liked, so. He sent, made compilation tapes for two or three of us and uh, I remember sending him music and 
someone at the NME um, had uh, uh, an idea that we could make a record together. So Alex and Jody happened to be in London and we were, we recorded, we both played on each side and we made a record. Uh, and then uh, from there, we Alex played some shows with the fan club. We actually recorded some music which we haven't released. We did some uh, with Alex um, singing some of our songs and us singing Alex's, Alex's songs. He was a great guitar player um, and we and a cool guy, you know, like the epitome of cool. He just said, uh, you know, if you're ever doing anything, give us a shout. So I did. Um, and he came up to the studio and he played on a few tracks. That was a real experience as well, seeing him in that environment because we would spend hours tweaking guitar amps and stuff like that, trying to get the perfect sound. He turned up his guitar, just plugged it into my amp, didn't even tune it, and he's like, just roll the tape, man. <laughs> and he just played it in tuning, but it was like proper old school. Brilliant, you know. He phoned up once at my mum's house where I was, and, and he was phoning up to say how much he liked the song Hello Again, which was in the BMX Bangers album, Getting Dirty. And that was like amazing, the song I wrote. Oh my God, pinch me, you know. I remember asking him about, um, I was worried about that before getting that album about singing because I was still, I, th I think I was still finding my voice, you know, if you like. Um, I'm still looking, but I'm getting there. I remember speaking to Alex about vocals and studio and stuff like that. And um, a couple of weeks later, I got a letter. He'd gone back to America. He sent me a letter um, of how, how I should deal with my vocal in the studio and all that. Um, which I've still got, actually, it's brilliant and beautifully written, kind of real personal letter. No, I think he was very fond of Glasgow and, and um, after he died, Laura Chilton came over, his wife, to, to meet some of the people he'd maybe talked about. Yeah, she just wanted to come over and almost meet this, um, like, almost like family that Alex had, you know, in this kind of far off place and then there was a notion that it would seem kind of appropriate that some of Alex's um, uh, ashes were kind of brought uh, to to Glasgow for for Jason to you know put around the, uh, put around the place and um, then some of it I think were were sprinkled um, near a flat where we had a great party night one time uh, with Alex and then some of them ended up inside a guitar. Um, no, oh, no, no, inside guitar. my guitar. I, I didn't. Uh, Jason gave me some of the ashes and I didn't really know what to do with them. So that well. I'll stick them inside the guitar. So I, gaff, I just sort of got them in my hand, I gaffer taped them, you know, poured them a bit of gaff and then stuck them inside the guitar. I'm, I'm still waiting to be pulled by customs. I think it's like a little bit of coke, which I think, <laughs> or whatever, which I think Alex would like, but I haven't been pulled yet. I'm sure he's sort of hoping that I do it at some point. But yeah. anyway, so he, he, Alex travels with me in the guitar 